So hello and welcome back to Goomadi Coins and Banknotes and today we have a 10 shilling from 1942. So how do I know it's 1942? Well, we look at the signatures. So we've got Armitage, Fairlane, and then you go to a Renix catalogue or even an online catalogue and you can see that. Okay, so light is actually behind me so that's why you see shadow. Okay, so Armitage, Fairlane, 42. And this one's a general prefix, because the first prefix is F24, this is F35, and the last is G84. So basically, if we combine those, so we've got 76 million and 84 million, we have 160 million banknotes. And through all of this design, there's 451 million banknotes. And they would have got that from taking the... 98 all the way to a9 which is the last prefix although so you got g and it jumps to a so you don't go through the whole alphabet and the value of this one yeah, this is probably very fine so it has a catalog value of 175 fine is 80 so this one's probably in between those values so this was first issued in 1939 and well basically in 1936 they issued the one of the portrait of King George the V fifth on it. So obviously he passed away in 1936. So they had a lot of banknotes they probably did print in 1936 before he passed away. And uh, they only introduced these after those were probably exhausted. So the first signatures of this one were in orange. In 1942, they changed it to uh, the black signatures. The orange ones actually look a lot better. So this one has a portrait of King George VI. Nice, youthful portrait. And then we have the information, Commonwealth of Australia, which they took off, I think, in 1974, from memory. Okay, we have the coat of arms down below. You have this note, is legal tender for... 10 shillings in the Commonwealth and in all territories under the control of the Commonwealth. So it's in cursive. A lot of people can't read these cursive script these days, but I learned this in primary school. Hopefully they still learn it. This has 10 shillings, so 10 one shilling coins, or half a pound. So that's what a half stands for. And the, okay, the watermark is actually Captain Cook, which they, did issue on the, uh, so the watermark. Come on, go to the light. Yeah, look, there's Captain Cook. So these ones are a bit harder to see. So obviously they made the watermark a lot better in later periods. So on the back we have, uh, oh, that looks like, uh, so we've got pottery. So you make is that woodwork? That's metallurgy. Obviously, he's hammering something. He's probably making a horseshoe. Then that is a fitter and turning. And then we have a, a librarian books. So yeah, I'm not too sure what that one is. So that on early Australian banknotes, they all had these type of designs, which uh, probably based on Roman Greek architecture or Greco-Roman architecture, but they, you see the one pound was the same, but it's based on things that you would find in Australia. So this is industry, uh, the one pound had uh, uh, merinos, so agriculture, the five pound, what did the five pound? Uh, I had a wharf scene and the 10 pound had a okay another agriculture scene of um, people leading a horse with some rakes so uh, this is very interesting so on the bottom it's got manufacturers so industry so all of them have the inscription about what it is and I don't have the full set. The 10 pound is actually a lot harder. But the 
the one pound is the most common. So, at the time period, what would you have been paid? I've read somewhere that people in wharfs got paid about six to eight pounds in the Second World War. But my grandma, she was born in, was it 1922? So, the Second World War, she was actually working and she did work. She's telling me she worked at a, uh, it was like a supermarket and she got paid eight shillings per week. So for women, they would have actually got paid a lot less than guys. So that's where the pay discrepancy did come from. Until the 60s when they were uh, pretty much allowed to get paid. And then in the 70s and 80s, they got equality in pay. So, and we're still not there yet. Okay, even though women and guys do get the same pay range. I've heard some places that... Uh, like on construction sites, women get paid less for some reason. Still, gee, I don't know why. So, anyway, this is a nice orange banknote. And when they issued the next issue, it's more like a brownish banknote. So, I don't know why they changed it from orange to brown. Because, uh, yeah, that one doesn't look too good. Well, it looks uh, quite horrible. So... Okay, so the, the, the measurements of this banknote are 76 by 137. And they do have star replacement banknotes. So those are quite expensive uh, for a low grade, like a very good one. You'll be paying at least 50 to 100 bucks. For one in this condition, yeah, about four or 500 for a star note. Yeah, so this one I'll probably value at about $100. Yeah, not that bad. Let me know what you think about these pre-decimal banknotes and if you want me to make any more videos. Because these are quite a nice banknote to get. And this one was issued, because it was issued for seven years, it's the lowest value of the lot. The most expensive is the 39.42 issued for three years. That was the Sheen and McFarlane. Then we have the Coombe and Watts 49.52, obviously three years. Then we have the Coombe and Wilson issued from 1952 to 54. But like, like our current polymer banknotes, in which I change what I did change over, uh, you can get a lot of the. 20s and 50s of the old series or the first series still in circulation uh, so they've been quite a few years so these probably would have circulated for quite a few years after the changeover because why take them out of circulation when you know they can suit the value until uh, they've totally been worn and replaced anyway thank you very much and have an awesome coin banknote collecting time thank you and Ru <laughs>